Good morning. So today we are going to learn about Williamson Hall plot from X-ray diffraction data. So uh, to talk about uh, Williamson Hall plot, so why do we need exactly Williamson Hall plot that you can uh, find out from the note which I provided to you. The note was titled uh, Scarer Formula Plot Williamson Hall Plot, which was in uh, Microsoft document format. So here I'm going to demonstrate to you how we can do Williamson Hall plot. In order to do Williamson Hall plot, we have to, so I have opened origin here. So we have to go to file and you have to import that data. So this way we can do. So, uh, but before that uh, you have to uh, save your .txt file at a drive convenient, maybe at a drive where you save your other project related document. And now, so this uh, two hour zinc oxide, uh, this is a text file. Already I have done a, a normal origin plot for this uh, data. And also here Williamson Hall plot for the same data here. But for demonstration purpose, I am uh, doing this again. So let me import the data. You select which text file you want to import to origin. And after selecting, you have to open the data. Then you can see that your data has been imported here. So along x-axis, two theta angles are plotted. And along y-axis, the intensity of the x-ray diffraction peaks are plotted. So now we plot the data and let's see what we get. So this is the uh, X-ray diffraction pattern for zinc oxide nanostructures. So we can uh, adjust the scales here. So I will double click at the scale and let us start from a value of suppose 28. And we can go up to X-axis value of 72. So now uh, let us modify the vertical scale. Let us go to the value of minus 10 for y axis, and we can go up to a value of 3750. Okay, so you apply, and now this plot looks quite good. So, what you can do is uh, you can uh, Okay, I'm trying to enlarge it, but uh, looks like there's some issue. I can't enlarge, no problem. Okay, no problem. Now uh, you can make this uh, XID plot lines thicker. In order to make them thicker, double click anywhere on the uh, plot, and with with you see it's. Uh, by default, it is set at 0 0.5. So let me increase that to 3. So now this plot looks even thicker. So now what? OK, so for your reference, it's uh, angle 2 theta along x-axis. And along y-axis, it is uh, intensity in uh, arbitrary units. Okay. So now what we are going to do is that we will do multiple peak fitting. There are nine peaks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one small peak here, eight, nine. So we are going to fit all the nine peaks. In order to do that, what we'll do, we'll go to analysis here. Analysis, then we'll do fit multiple peaks. We have clicked that fit multiple peaks. Then I have already done this fitting before. So by default, it's chosen as Lorenzian. So we'll do Lorenzian fitting. And there are total nine number of peaks, as you can see here. So we'll uh, choose nine as the number of peaks. Then we'll do OK. So here uh, you get a message, attention message, which is written that uh, please double click on the centers of the peaks, OK? So I'm pressing OK, double click at the center of the peaks, how we can do this. So we'll just do OK. And let me go to the first peak, so I'll double click here. 
okay so peak one so again same for peak two then again peak three then uh, peak four peak five peak six peak seven peak eight peak nine so then one dialog box appears uh, here so please roughly validate the width of peaks so i'm just doing okay so as you can see now that all the peaks are uh lorenzian fitted okay all the nine peaks that you choose chose so uh, you have to choose the peaks manually by adjusting your cursor now uh, the peak values will be obtained in a file that i can show you so you minimize the plot and come to the file where we had the data so uh, you have uh, in the second tab you see multiple peaks fit report so you click there once you click there you scroll down and after you scroll, scroll down in this peaks peak section you can see uh, several information like area area means the area of uh, one particular since we fitted nine peaks so you can see that there are nine peaks here so in the peaks you can uh, these are the in the first uh, column you have the areas of the peaks given in the second column uh, center center means two theta two theta values are given here then width width here means the full width half maxima of each peak okay and height height means the intensity of each peak so out of these uh, four informations that we have obtained here so uh, uh, we will mainly need center and width values okay so uh, i have separately copied the center and width values to a uh, to an excel sheet so i will share that excel sheet separately with you Okay, but one thing you should take care of, you come to the statistics part, in the statistics part mainly you should see this uh, R square value. So R square value should be close to one. The closer it is to one, the better is the fitting which you have done. Okay, so in this case, the R square value is 0 0.99219. So it's not exactly one, but it's quite close to one. That means our peaks have been very well fitted. So, yes, once again, I'm repeating that the center value and the width, these two values we have to note down separately uh, and preferably we have to uh, copy them to uh, Excel sheet so that we can do further calculation. So uh, next time I am going back to the Excel sheet, which I have already made and uh, from there what further calculations we have to do we'll discuss uh, we are uh, here at the excel sheet and uh, those uh, data have been so we this is two theta value this value we need we get from uh, origin fit and another value we get from origin fit is this full with half maxima values but one thing we have to remember that those values of 2 theta and full width half maxima, they are in degrees. Okay. But uh, in order to do Williamson Hall plot, uh, we have to convert these angles to radians. Okay. And always remember that Williamson Hall plot is done with 4 sin theta values along the x axis and beta cos theta values along the y axis. So beta is nothing but full with half maxima values in radian okay so what we have done here we have two theta values in this column then these two theta values have been converted to radian values in the next column okay but as you can see that uh, here we have uh, beta cos theta and four sin theta that means we need theta values so these two theta radian values have been converted to theta radian values so how we can do radian values so you can easily do that with uh, formula given in excel suppose uh, i am going to convert uh, two theta degree values to radian values so let me show you quickly how we can do this suppose choose this particular cell so uh, double click here 
so you give one equal uh, symbol here then you type r a d so as soon as i type r a d i get these uh, radiance options so you double click here and after double clicking here you choose the particular value which you can which you want to convert so this 31.75894 value we want to uh, convert to radiance so that is actually the cell uh, B5. So you close the cell and then you press enter from your keyboard. And you see that uh, this uh, value of uh, two, th uh, 2 theta in radian is 0 0.5542987. So this is exactly the value. So these two values are 0. Point, so same values. So in the next, in the C column, the two theta degree values have been converted to two theta radian values as shown in this particular cell. So I am deleting this value. So let me again uh, come back to the explanation. So after you have found two theta radian values, just find the theta radian values. Theta radian values uh, are nothing but the half the values of these uh, half of these values. So these values are half of these values so i can just click here and you can see in the formula space here that it is actually c5 divided by 2 similarly if i click the next value it is c6 divided by 2 okay so this way you can find the theta radian values and from the origin plot what we have found we have also found the full width half maxima values which are nothing but beta values okay but those beta values were also given in a uh, degree from the origin plot that we have to convert it to radian values so here we have beta radian values okay so convert those degree values to radian with the same formula as you can see radians and e5 e5 is nothing but this particular cell so you convert this uh, uh, degree values of full with half maximum to uh, radian values of full with half maximum okay so once you have these uh, values, then uh, for the sake of uh, Williamson Hall plot, whose equations have been given to you in the note. So we have to find uh, two quantities. One is uh, four sine theta and the other one is beta cos theta. Beta cos theta means beta, the radian value, this one, and cos theta means uh, cos of this radian value. Okay, so if you take, so if you just uh, click here, you will see F5, I have F5 here. F5 means this particular value beta and cos theta, cos of theta, uh, cos of D5. Here, this is the D5 or theta value. But remember that uh, both beta and theta now should be in radians, not in degrees. Okay, so in that case, you will find this value similarly if we come back to the next um, value then what we get if we get a beta value of uh, f6 this is the f6 column and beta cos theta cos of uh, this value okay so d6 cos of d6 so this particular column is d6 so that way we can calculate all beta cos theta values corresponding to theta radian and beta or which is the full width half maxima in radian values then the next quantity where we which we have to calculate uh, is the four sin theta values so four sin theta values uh, how we can calculate four so you can see the formula here four multiplied by sine of d5 so theta radian is here in the d5 column so it's uh, 4 uh, sine theta similarly uh, for uh, next 4 sine theta you have to multiply 4 and d6 values d6 is here so this way you have to calculate all 4 sine theta values okay i hope this much is clear to you uh, anyway separately i will share this particular excel file with uh, you and the next uh, what we have to do is we have to again go back to origin and plot these values this h column along x axis and g column along y axis so uh, let me open that origin file already plotted the data this is the origin file so 
here actually uh, i have deleted one particular uh, set of points because uh, that was leading to a uh, bad fitting so i have uh, worked with eight data points here okay so in this origin file actually here along x axis we are plotting four sin theta four sin theta and along the y axis we are plotting beta cos theta okay so after you have plotted all the points so you can see that these points are quite is scattered and then you have to do a linear fitting so uh, this is the so now let me make this line a bit thicker maybe three point width okay this red line is the more or less the linear fitting okay so linear fitting if for linear fitting you have to go to analysis then uh, you go to fitting then fit linear open dialog and basically you don't have to change anything don't have to change anything you just do okay and you will get this uh, red line as the linear fitted line so here the r square value is quite low 0 0.5133 which is quite far away from the uh, very ideal value which should be close to one why because this data points are very scattered here okay okay so let me explain you the various quantities uh, which have been um, found from the linear fitting of this data so uh, if you remember uh, williamson hall uh, equation which is um, which is uh, beta hkl cos theta equal to k lambda by d plus 4 epsilon uh, sin theta okay so uh, k lambda by d is the intercept and epsilon is the slope because so everything has been defined in the node given to you so uh, from the slope slope epsilon means the string okay from the slope if you have calculated the slope if you check the slope here so the slope here this is the value of strain which is 8.16199 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 4 and the intercept value intercept value is uh, equal to k lambda divided by d so k is a constant and the lambda is a wavelength of x rays and d is the particle size so if you can calculate the intercept in that case uh, if you find the intercept from the fitting in that case you can calculate the average particle size from this value so you can calculate the strain from the slope value and average particle size from the intercept value and that way this is the williamson hall plot for zinc oxide nanoparticles for the given set of data